G to enforce law banning smoking in movies. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Sincerely, so in everything that is going on, <laughs> the insecurity issue, the not is bleeding Nigeria, then you now come down to occurrences in this month of December. Are we talking about justice for oral money? Are we talking about the children, the 17 children that a certain driver rammed into? Are we talking about, I don't understand. Why, when, when did we get here? That is now the problem. <laughs> of course, except they come out and say the rationale behind this. I do not see how this should be an issue. We are having people who are being killed on a daily basis. What am I saying? On an early basis. And what they can come out is to come and say, oh, that they're going to ban smoking and movies. Wow. <laughs> like, wow. Kudos to this administration. Oh. Kudos to them. Let's listen to their reasons. The FG said tobacco companies were including, were inducing entertainers with money to glamorize smoking in the movies and entertainment sector. Now the news in detail. The federal government with stakeholders in the movie and entertainment industry plant to enforce the law banning smoking in movies. Adedayo Thomas, executive director of National Film and Video Centers Board, NFVCB, made this known on Saturday at a stakeholders roundtable in Lagos. The roundtable focused on the National Tobacco Control Act 2015 and the National Tobacco, Tobacco Control Regulations 2019 in Lagos as they relate to the movie and entertainment industry. Mr. Thema said the engagement is geared towards ensuring that practitioners in the movie industries adhere to no smoking laws in Nigerian movie, among other relevant laws of the country. The meeting was hosted by the NFVCB and with technical support from the Corporate Accountability and Public Participation Africa, C-A-P-P-A, -P -P -A, cover. Wow. <laughs> wow. Like, wow. Since then, I keep asking myself, how did Nigeria, how did these people present themselves to Nigerians and they believed? Like, in this issue, do you know that over the weekend, if you hear the bad news, this week that passed, are we going to talk about the people who got burnt in Sokoto? But they were traveling from Sokoto to Kaduna, Abuja. I don't really, I can't really say now. People who bandits attacked their vehicle and because of bullet fires at their vehicle, it capsized and caught fire. And the bandits could not, they could not even come out because the bandits were pointing even as they were burning. I even learned that a certain eight or seven months pregnant woman was in that bus. Like, Wow. Yet, it is not enough for them to call for a state of emergency in these places. It is not enough. Now, as if that is not enough, is it for Sylvester that everybody is coming out to, you know, vent for? We cannot see what they have done. They have only come out to say they will ensure. They will ensure. And even over the weekend, we are hearing how, you know, the chief of, the commander-in-chief of armed forces is coming, is telling savages, chase them. I'm saying, what, what use does it make? How many come, how many chase them, have you said? How many make sure you deal with them, have you said? How many will deal with them in the language that, that they understand, have you said? How many we will, have you said, and nothing, your willpower is not yet, is not willing anything to action? Somebody said, if a whole, what did they call it again? A whole general, a former head of state that was a general, could come in. And the, the insecurity in Nigeria escalated instead of even being, it was being, I mean, addressed, it escalated. Then what, what is the fate of a civilian going to make sure? Let me tell you to happen. Sincerely, and I'm going to say this and I quote, do you even know that Abacha, the great Abacha everyone knows, let General Abacha said any insurgency in any land, any insurgency in any land that lasts for more than 72 or 48 hours, that the government of that day or that time 
is actually responsible for the insurgents. It is not my word. I did not say so. I'm only quoting what he said. I am only quoting what he said. I am only quoting what he said. And in the middle of all this happening, what did we see? What can you see? You keep seeing them chasing clapped. I don't know if this government wants to be popular on Facebook. You see them coming out to, to say things that when you see it, you are like, ah, for crying out loud. Do you know people are dying every day? Recently, the Northerners now, the one that even shocked me was now. The Northerners that the Southerners are always complaining that they don't talk about anything that concerns them. That the South, the Southerners are always and always and always, always speaking for. Or they, these people, even when the Southerners speak for them, these people come and attack. Why? Because they are, they are town member. Their ethnic member, their tribesman is, is one. Or their tribes people are those in government. All of a sudden, they not came out. And I'm saying, wow, for the not to came out, let you, let you know that this thing is now choking them. They can, no long, they can no longer come out and say, hey, no, it's our, it's our, our clan man. It is no longer that kind of a story. It is no longer that kind of a story. It is no longer that one of it. I mean, do you know how many, if you are even talking about the insecurity, talk about the farmers and headers, how those governments have turned their backs on farmers. And yet they are telling the farmers, eh, we want the people to keep producing rice in a security, in a country where there is no security, in a country where headers were given the go-ahead to slaughter farmer. And this administration say we have, we have, we have placed our solidly our weight is behind the full and headsmen. The southern governors came together and signed an anti-open grazing bill into law. This government said, oh, they should take the southern governors to court. That they are, they are infringing on their human rights. So, infringing on people's farm. Going to people's farm now to, to render their crops. 